Be yourself. How many times have you heard that phrase, but have you ever stopped, even for a second, to think about what it really means? How can you live up to it if you can't even explain what it actually means? Well, let me tell you. There are two perspectives on this matter. The first one is stagnation. It's common among certain self-help gurus whose videos you constantly scroll past. They preach that you should accept yourself as you are and leave everything unchanged, much like the body positivity movement. People are dying from obesity, yet they're advised to just accept themselves as is, with the promise that they won't need to change. This mindset helps people numb themselves, accepting their flaws as an unchangeable part of their identity. But is that really true? Can you truly be the best version of yourself if your life is filled with constant fears, insecurity, and avoiding conflicts? The answer is obvious. This is an immature stance, a form of stagnation with no chance for growth. But we strive to become better. So listen carefully. Being yourself means understanding your true needs and taking active steps to fulfill them. Remember this definition because it calls you to action. It stops your mind from clinging to the pointless thoughts that spin in your head all day long. Instead, you start operating like a well-oiled machine focused on achieving your goals. When you adopt this approach, your mind operates like a computer program. First, it loads all your true goals and values. Then, like a skilled strategist, it calculates the paths to achieve them. With this mindset, you don't stay stagnant. Instead, you steadily make progress, step by step, despite any setbacks. Let's break it down further. You have your true needs, that's point A. You wanna fulfill them. That's point B. So being yourself means moving from point A to point B. If you know the coordinates of these two points, you can easily map out the route between them. Now, let me guide you on how to truly be yourself. We'll start with the first step, defining point A. Grab a piece of paper and list the qualities that describe who you are right now. Go through every aspect of your life, career, social standing, relationships, creativity. Write down how you express yourself and how you would act in various situations. Don't hold back and be honest with yourself. This is your point A. Next step two, create the image of your idea ideal self. Your point B, think back to three stages of your life, childhood, adolescence, and early adulthood. Take a separate sheet of paper and write down everything you enjoyed during those times, all the interests that defined you as a person. Review what you listed in the previous step. Based on that, outline how you want to see yourself in the future. Don't be afraid to write down your boldest fantasies as they reflect your deepest dreams. After all, we excel at what we love doing, otherwise we wouldn't pursue it. Our interests are like a magical energy, fueling both our mind and heart on the path to harmony, fame, and success. So take a moment to gather your thoughts and divide everything into two categories. What truly inspires you and what doesn't interest you at all. By doing this, you kill two birds with one stone. First, you'll know exactly what to avoid. And second, you'll clearly see the aspects of life that bring you genuine satisfaction. But don't think that this is where it all ends or that it will be as easy as two plus two. Now we move on to the third step, creating a plan to move from point A to point B. It's crucial to understand how far you are from your desired point. Look at the qualities you had in the past and those you still possess today. If some of them match, keep them as they are. These are your strengths, the ones you must guard like the apple of your eye. Focus on maximizing these qualities. They are your ace up your sleeve, your specialization. If some points differ, these are your areas for growth. Progress in these areas will bring you significantly closer, not only to a better life, but also to discovering your true self. When you achieve this, that's what it truly means to be yourself. Also, take stock of what you already have. This will help you manage your resources wisely. This includes your clothes, books, computer, and money. We now move on to the final fourth step. It's called new life. From this point forward, you need to consciously work on yourself, moving toward your ideal self. If you notice that your social connections are slipping, it's the perfect time to start attending different events to expand your network. Or if you realize that your style could use some improvement, then it's time to spend some money on new clothes. Or maybe your body isn't in the best shape. Here's the takeaway. Now is the perfect time to create a workout plan and hit the gym. Every six months or so, reassess your goals and the methods you're using to achieve them. As I've mentioned before, being yourself is about constant movement, not a static state. As you grow, you change, and so do your qualities and your ideal self. To avoid getting stuck in outdated beliefs you adopted a year ago, continually update your principles and rules to align with who you are today. Take action.